This is the first revision lecture for Unit 3. I'm going to be looking at 3.1, getting the most from reactants. Now it's quite a big topic, so we're going to do maybe two or three revision lectures. And in this first one, we're going to concentrate on molar volume and calculations based on molar volumes. So we're going to start by looking at how you calculate the number of moles in. Now, if the substance you're interested in is a pure solid or pure liquid, you'd measure its mass and you'd use the equation number moles as the mass divided by the gram formula mass and that equation is given in your data book. If the substance is a solution, you need to know its concentration and volume and use this equation N equals CV. The concentration is in moles per litre and the volume is in litres. And again, that, you'll find that equation in your data book. And you did all that in National 5. However, however, if it's a gas, then you need to use a new equation. And that is, number of moles is the volume of gas divided by the molar volume. So what's the molar volume? So the molar volume is the volume occupied by one mole of the gas. So I put this equation in this yellow box because for some strange reason this is the only equation you need to use in higher chemistry that is not given in the data booklet. So you need to make sure you go away and learn that equation. The number of moles is the volume of the gas divided by the molar volume. So for example, how many moles of oxygen gas are present in a 6 litre container at STP, which stands for at standard temperature and pressure? And they need to give you this next fact. The molar volume, or the volume of one mole of oxygen, at STP is 24 litres. So in order to calculate the number of moles of oxygen, we'll use our equation, which we've remembered. The volume divided by the molar volume. So N equals the volume is 6 litres, the molar volume is 24 litres. So that comes to 0 0.25 moles. Just a couple of points to look out for. Sometimes they might give you the volume in cubic centimetres, in which case like volume in the N equals CV, you need to divide that by a thousand to get it into litres because the molar volume is always given in litres. Also just note, the molar volume isn't always 24 litres. Uh, it will change depending on the temperature and pressure. Now for oxygen at standard temperature and pressure it is 24 but uh, if we change the temperature or pressure it also would change. Okay, now the point of knowing how to work out the number of moles of a gas is so we can use it in calculations based on uh, balanced equations like this one. Calculate the volume of phosphine gas, which is pH 3 in litres, produced when 29 grams of aluminium phosphide reacts with excess water. Again, it tells you the molar volume of phosphine, 24 litres again in this case, and they give you the balanced equation. So, to remember how to tackle these ones, can I remind you of how we tackled them in National 5? I taught you a five step process for doing this. Five steps were circle the two substances of interest, so you do that just the same. Write the mole ratio based on the balanced equation, again, that's the same as National 5. Three, Calculate the number of moles given in the question for one of those two substances. Now, at National 5, in some questions you were just given the value of n, so it said if 10 moles of something reacts. Or sometimes you're given the mass of a substance, in which case you would work out the number of moles by mass of a GFM. Or sometimes you're given the concentration and volume of a solution. A higher, there's a fourth alternative, and that is you'll be given the volume and the molar volume of a gas. So step three, 
use one of those four techniques to work out the number of moles of the one thing in the question that you're able to. In step four, same as NASA 5, you substitute this value of n into the mole ratio. And then step five, you calculate the mass of the unknown, or if it's a gas, it might be the volume of the unknown, or if it's a solution, it might be the concentration of the unknown. So let's apply that to this question. So first stage, circle the two things of interest. So that's the aluminium phosphide and the phosphine gas. Step two, write down the mole ratio according to the balanced equation. It's a nice example, it's just one to one. Now step three, you're able to calculate the number of moles of one of those things. In this case it's aluminium phosphide because you're told the mass of aluminium phosphide. So we work out the number of moles we've actually got of aluminium phosphide. So that would be, in this case, M over GFM, which is 29 grams. Gram formula mass of aluminium phosphide is 58. So we've got 0 0.5 moles of aluminium phosphide. So I put the 0 0.5 in there, which means we'll have 0 0.5 moles of our phosphine. And what we want to work out is the volume of phosphine. So we have to use or rearrange our equation N equals V over Vm. So we need to rearrange that so it's volume equals well we take the molar volume over to the other side. So it becomes number of moles times molar volume, which is 0 0.5 is the number of moles, the molar volume is 24, so our answer is 12 litres. Okay. And there's all sorts of variations in those questions, and at the end of the revision lectures for 3.1, I'll point you to a document in which there's lots of questions you can practice. Okay, back to gas volumes. There's a few short cuts we can do in calculations based on gas volumes. Uh, if you just go ahead and consider what the mass of one more carbon is. So we look up a data booklet, we find the mass of one more carbon is 12 grams. Whereas the mass of one more of uranium is 238 grams. An awful lot more. Both contain the exact same number of atoms of carbon and uranium, but because each uranium atom is far, far heavier than each carbon atom, the total mass is far heavier. If we apply this to the gases as well, and compare the mass and volume of a mole of hydrogen and a mole of radon, remember hydrogen's diatomic, its formula is H2, where radon, being a noble gas, isn't diatomic. The mass of one mole of hydrogen is 2 grams, whereas radon is 222. A bit like the situation up here. Each radon atom is far bigger than a hydrogen molecule, so it weighs a lot more. But if we look at the volume in litres at standard temperature and pressure, they're the same. So it's usually about 24 at standard temperature and pressure. And we keep on seeing this figure 24. Uh, can vary slightly, but the thing is, the molar volume is the same for all gases at the same temperature and pressure. Okay, I'll just highlight that. The molar volume at any given temperature or pressure is the same for all gases. And that means sometimes we can simplify calculations. It's probably best demonstrated by just running through two or three types of calculations. So, Look at this question. Which gas occupies the largest volume? We're well, given four different gases. And it tells you that they're all measured under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. It doesn't say what those conditions are, but it means they all have the same molar volume. Don't know what the molar volume is, but they all have the same molar volume. So 
the one which we have the largest number of moles of will occupy the largest volume. Say the molar volume was 20 litres. We had one mole of everything, they'd all occupy 20 litres. But if one had more than one mole, it'd occupy the largest volume. So how many moles of carbon dioxide gas do we have? CO2, gram form of mass is 44. So 0.44 divided by 44 is 0 0.01 moles. Hydrogen gas weighs 2 grams. So 0.2 divided by 2 is 0 0.1. So that will occupy a bigger volume than that. Argon weighs 40. So 0 0.8 divided by 40 is going to be 0 0.04 moles. No, 0 0.02 moles. And oxygen gas is 32. So 0 0.32 over 32 is 0 0.01. So this one, we've got the greatest number of moles of hydrogen gas, so it will occupy the greatest volume. Well, here's another similar question. Which of the following has the same volume as 14 grams of nitrogen gas? All measured under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. So nitrogen gas, diatomic, is N2. So we've got 14 divided by 28. We've got 0 0.5 moles of nitrogen gas. How many moles do we have of these things? Ethane is C2H6, which comes to 30. So 14 divided by 30 equals 0 0.46 moles. Similar, but not identical. Carbon dioxide gas is 44. So we have 0 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide gas. Exact same number of moles of nitrogen gas. So we'll occupy the same volume. Let's just check the other two for completeness. Neon gas weighs about 20. So we've got one mole of that. And carbon monoxide is 28. So again, we've got one mole of that. So it's B, the 22 grams of carbon dioxide gas is the exact same number of moles as 14 grams of nitrogen gas. So we'll occupy the same volume. And final calculation is of this type. Calculate the volume of oxygen that would be needed to react with 100 cubic centimetres of ethane. And there's the balanced equation. So, it's a balanced equation, so it's one of these five-step things. Circle the two things of interest. Calculate the volume of oxygen to react to 100 cubic centimetres of ethane. Mole, mole ratio is 1 to 3.5. We're told we've got 100 cubic centimetres of ethane, but we're not told it's molar volume, so we can't actually work out how many moles of ethane we've got. But because the two things of interest are gases, we can just substitute in the volume. And the volume ratio is identical to the number of mole ratio. So if we've got 100 cubic centimetres of that, we'll have 350 cubic centimetres of oxygen gas. So it's far simpler than those previous equations because we can just substitute in the number, the volume for the number of moles because the two things circled are gases. We can only do this if the two things circled are gases. And the second equation here would be what volume of gas is produced? Well, two things are produced, but this is not a gas. So we forget about that, but this one is a gas. Okay, and the mole ratio is 1 to 3.5 to 2. So we've got 100 cubic centimetres there. We'll have 200 cubic centimetres here. And that's the only gas produced. So the volume of gas produced is 200 cubic centimetres. 
Okay, so that was the first, uh, first part of the 3.1 and the main things to remember from that section are firstly, you should be able to explain what is meant by the term molar volume volume occupied by one mole of a gas you should be able to recall the molar volume equation okay. not in the data booklet, remember it You should be able to express quantities in terms of moles, so that means using n equals CV, n equals V over VM, or n equals mass over GFM. And you should be able to carry out calculations based on balance equations, including those which involve gas volumes.